you know, what mo is most important is what the ancient people understood of the winter solstice. You know, we say, oh, it's the winter solstice, that's great. No, most of these, and these obviously come from Stonehenge here in Britain uh, and Ireland, New Grange, but most sites were set up to actually acknowledge the winter and summer solstice. Of course, there were ones aligned, of course, to the equinox as well. Stonehenge was set up to say, at the summer solstice, the sun, after the summer solstice, will start dying. And it dies, like I was describing, the king must die. And the king dies down. And then, you may know that on the winter solstice, or around the winter, in New Grange, how many, has anybody been to New Grange? Good. At New Grange, there is this wonderful window. And if, chances in the hundred, thousand, that it's not a cloudy day in Ireland, if the sun shines, <laughs> and people pay or wait years to have this experience, and then it's cloudy for all the days, but if you are lucky, on the five days around the winter solstice, the sun, the first rays of the sun, enter through this box. And the, you see, as you stand within New Grange, which is like a huge kiva, a huge womb, you see the sun entering into the great mother. And she penetrates, he, she is penetrated by him. And she says, I will now give birth to a new year. That is the symbolism. That is what is happening as the sun is in front of the galactic center. The sun, ourselves, penetrating the great mother, asking, will you allow us to be the birthers of your new world? We come with humility, we come through our hearts. Let us be that priest king that will be birthing the new world. But to do that, we have to let go of all our expectations, all our baggage, all our beliefs that are going to limit us as we only get halfway along and think, that's it, I'm not going to do it any further. We have to trust our hearts and through it the feminine. You may know this is why we have a Christmas tree. A Christmas, obviously the Christians took on the idea of the, the winter solstice. So before Christmas, before the winter solstice, you cut down a tree. Trees were often denoting that's the end of that time the end of that age. Let's cut the tree down. And then we put it in something nice, and then we put stars and lights on it to say, come back, come to us, let's welcome the sun back in. And so the tradition of the Christmas tree, the lights, very important for us to remember, we've been doing this for ages, reminding ourselves of are we willing to receive the new energy? So where are we? This is us. We are here, 2012, probably 2010 here. We are not over here. We are literally in the death throes. We have gone so far along the mother's vagina, there's no looking back. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Although I can see some of you crawling out. Let me out! <laughs> Just dive head down. They were those of you who were born breech, I know. No! <laughs> you came into this world feet first, so you're probably going into a vagina feet first. <laughs> You know, the eye of the needle, you know? How hard is it for the rich man to go through the eye of the needle? That's what we're all doing, trying to get all our baggage into this vagina. Let it go! So the hologram, that what we called reality, and I want you, hopefully, to get over this idea that there is no reality out there except for your perception. What you believe is what you see. If you do not know this, either go back to your brothers and sisters and ask about a certain event in your life. They will tell you a completely different view of what went on at that time. They, of course, are wrong, and you are right, <laughs> but they have a different viewpoint. <laughs> or all go to the same film and ask each other, what did you see? What inspired you? And you'll find that each of us is triggered by something different because it's in our consciousness. So whatever's in your consciousness is what you'll create. 
And I think it's wonderful that at this time, it's the Maya that we're moving back to. We're listening to the Maya because the word is illusion. It's an illusion. And what we have to ask ourselves is, what is the illusion? And I want to honor the Maya here today and all of us as Mayans. The Mayan tradition goes back thousands and thousands of years. It is an illusion or delusion that it's a few thousand years old. When I speak to ancient Maya, speak to ancient Hawaiians, Maoris, they all talk about the Maya being brothers and sisters with them 100,000 years ago. Please, let's get away from the idea that it is just in these first years of what we call AD, ACE. The Mayas are ancient people. Many of us are ancient Mayans. And we remember laying down the consciousness that created the illusion that we call reality. And we set it in paradigms of time and space. The Maya are guardians of time and space. So it is not surprising that as time changes, we're back to the Mayan cultures to understand this. And it is interesting, I know that most of you probably know this, but the word apocalypse actually means lifting of the veil. We are in the apocalypse that the Bible, of course, refers to in a slightly distorted way. And what it says, it is the time of revelation. <laughs> but revelation of those things that were only known to a few are going to be known to everybody. Yes. 